This is the Tetra Pak factory in the south of Sweden. Tetra Pak pioneered the modern paper carton, and they now produce more than 130 billion cartons every year. Using a combination of paper and plastic, these cartons allow milk and fruit juice to be stored for over six months without the need of refrigeration or preservatives. But making paper hold liquid on the face of it seems like magic. This is Frovi, Sweden, an area of sustainable woodlands specifically planted for the forest industry. It's here that the story of the carton package begins, because to make cartons, they need paper, and lots of it. It's 8 a.m., and forester Mats is heading to work. I've been working in a forest all my life, and I love it. <laughs> it's the greatest work you can have. But much as Mats loves watching the forest trees grow, what he really enjoys is cutting them down. That's because Mats is one of the guys responsible for felling enough trees to feed the paper mills. But you won't catch him wielding an axe. Thanks to this amazing machine, he's able to fell and log a tree from the comfort of his air-conditioned cab. His machine is the logging equivalent of a Swiss Army knife, and it can fell, strip and saw a 30-metre tree in less than a minute. First up, vice-like claws enable him to grasp the trunk. Next, a power source slices through to fell it. Before electric rollers pull the whole tree through the arm to neatly strip it of its branches. Finally, the power saw cuts the clean trunk into four meter logs, ready for collection. Working this way, Mats can fell and log a staggering 250 tons of wood every day. The logs from the forest are transported a few kilometers down the road to the paper mill. The first task here is to get rid of the unwanted bark. So the logs are fed along a conveyor belt into a giant drum. It's a bit like a washing machine, and its job is to clean the bark from the logs. It does this by bashing the logs against each other, causing the bark to fall away and leaving the valuable trunk intact. The cleaned logs then make their way towards the chipper, which uses tempered steel blades to slice the logs into small pieces. The next task is to remove a substance called lignin, which binds the cellulose fibers together. So it's time for a very hot bath. The wood chips are fed into this giant rocket-shaped kettle and boiled at over 160 degrees Celsius. This separates the fibers from the cellulose, turning the whole lot into a golden brown liquid. The resulting fibers are then washed clean and stored in these giant tanks. The wood has become wood pulp. Now all they need to do is transform this pulp into paper. That process begins by spraying the pulp onto a huge mobile sieve, which allows the water to drain away and the fibers to mesh together. The result is raw brown paper, perfect for cardboard boxes or grocery bags, but still way too rough to make a carton package. What's missing is a layer of white paper, so, on the other side of the plant, the miller takes some of the brown pulp and bleaches it. This white pulp is then sprayed on top of the brown, and because both are still wet, they bond happily together. This neat two-tone sandwich of brown and white fibres is then dried. It's fed between hot rollers in a 220 metre long drying and coating machine. The machine is so huge, factory workers even use scooters to get from one end to the other. Finally, the finished paper rolls are sliced into smaller sections, ready for the 500-kilometer journey to the Tetra Pak factory in Lund. But moving these massive paper rolls to the print works by hand would be a tough job. So instead, Tetra Pak have decided to let an army of robots take the strain.
With the paper loaded, rollers bearing the carton's printing design are fitted and the machine is ready to roll. As the design is printed, creases are simultaneously made in the paper, which will later form the shape of the carton package. But first, the surface of the paper needs to be sealed with a coating of hot melted polythene. The outside is coated to seal in the ink, before the inside receives a triple layer to protect the contents. The finished rolls are then sliced into individual widths and are ready to be formed into cartons. But before this can happen, they need the sterilised liquid they'll be filled with. In this case, milk. Each day at the Arla Food Stockholm Dairy, tanker lorries transfer up to 1.2 million litres of milk via sterilised pipes to giant storage tanks. Every one of these tanks is capable of filling 125,000 one-litre milk cartons. So, with the milk and carton packaging ready, it's time for some clever juggling. First, the carton paper is rolled into a tube. The machine then pinches the bottom of the tube and uses a blast of hot air to seal it with a heat-sensitive glue. At the same time, the milk is piped inside. When the column of milk reaches the top, the tube is folded into the carton shape. Finally, the edges are folded over and glued, leaving the milk safely and hygienically sealed in. After a quick cold sterilising shower, the milk cartons roll off the production line at incredible speed. And they need to, because every day we get through 286 million of them. All that remains is for the cartons to be packed onto pallets, ready for transport to shops and supermarkets around the world. And while some may miss the chink of milk bottles as the milkman delivers the daily pint, it's good to know this simple and ingenious design means milk can be stored more safely and for longer than ever before.